here defensively or save it for the double tap. I think you'll probably see him have to spend it. Okay. Now, uh, if, I, if I'm side slip, I've got to say something here, like, make sure you call which ones you're going to re-roll. Well, Texas thinking about just going gunner right now. And that is a tough call. I think I'd probably I just burn the lock, I think. I don't, he's not going to say which ones he's re-rolling. Yeah, so. So he re-rolls two, three, and one. So he did that time only roll three. So maybe that leads me to believe that he wasn't invariably going to uh, re-roll that last eye on that. Ooh, wow. And that, you see, that happens so often when you're facing Gunner. When a guy, because Tex, if Side Slip could have chosen, obviously he would have just taken that one hit and taken one shield. But he didn't have that, you can't do that next one. You can't choose not to roll defense dice. And that is so frustrating when that happens. Now can he dodge Vader? He's just hoping for non-hits here. Oh my god, but that's the worst case scenario. Two crits and a hit. <laughs> and that's game. Wow. Well, when you look at it at the end here, and you look at how much health a Chirino had left, you say, oh, what a wash that was. And Tex just annihilated him. It was a lot closer game than what you're looking at right now. I mean, Tex got some really timely rolls at the end there. Uh, he also got kind of lucky with that direct hit on Dash. And Dash... Probably should have been alive for one more turn. Um, and Vader was probably going down right there on the double tap. Uh, but, uh, I still, yeah, Tex, I mean, they're all talking, I mean, yeah, there was bad luck right there at the end. But I mean, Tex was going to pull that win out anyway. He really, I just don't see how Corrin could have came back from that. Uh... It would have been interesting to see a Corrin Chirino endgame, but I th I think Chirino might have been able to wear him down. Uh, so Tex advances, and what? How impressive would it be if this dude not wins the Team Covenant Aces? Uh, after winning the largest online tournament we've had in the past year, he then goes on to win this tournament. What a stamp that would be. I mean, like I said earlier, everyone who plays X-Wing, even semi-competitively, knows who Paul Heaver is. I mean, he really is the name in X-Wing. Uh, like, for if 
the semi-competitive players, guys who just play maybe like, you know, once a week, once every other week, they all know who he is. People like me who play all the time know who, like, a Dallas Parker is, but uh, if he could, I mean, that how impressive would that be on his resume to say he made the world's finals in 2013, almost won, got uh, made it to the top eight in 2014, and then won the Team Covenant Open, and then won the Team Covenant Aces tournament. That would be damn impressive. So, um, let me talk here about the... Um, Which I could see who's watching. I don't understand why they don't do that. Well, your left hand's free, and your right hand's grip. Don't say it's gone. Alright, 
well, thank you all for tuning in. Um, gonna cut it off here. Uh, might try to do Morgan and Kinetic if I get a chance. Let me break this down one more time. Dauntless against Kinetic's running Boba and 88B. Oh, he's got two 88s. Yeah, I think... I think I'm going to go with Morgan here. I would like his squad a bit more if he had Mar Jade instead of Rebel Captive. That's often a decision these Decimator pilots uh, have to make. But I think... Uh, And again, those 88Bs, they'll, they'll be, or the, both the 88s will be able to do some considerable dodging against Oiken. Uh, but they're going to have a hard time locking down Vader. It, it should be a good match, though. I think, again, I would not be surprised if Kinetic won. Uh, Kelvin going with Morgan too, but that should be a good one. And then I'm gonna try to do these three as well. I'm uh, excited to see Fat Han back in action. You don't see him too much in Wave Six. He still was a very good ship in Wave Five. He's fallen off a bit in Wave Six. I think he has a hard time uh, penetrating those auto thruster ships. But this is a decent matchup for him. That should be a good one. And then Hothi, with a, he's the one with Boba. Oh, never mind, he's got double 88s as well. He's got the non uh, symmetrical 88s that you don't see too often. Stay on target. That's not going to do crap for him in this matchup. Because Sable's moving last. Because he's got two 8s. Or he's got a 10 and 8. He's got Boba with VI and 88B with VI. That'll be a good one. And we've got almost every one of these matchups is just two ships. That's crazy. So. Yep. Alright, well, thanks for tuning in. And if you guys want to subscribe to me, uh, you will get notifications whenever I go live. So I'd appreciate it. But thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Peace.